We've gone through Easter and, and uh, Good Friday and Holy Week, and uh, Jesus is alive. He's risen. And so let's, we're going to take a look at the next, in the next coming weeks here at some of the resurrection appearances that Jesus made. And we're going to look at what that might mean for us. Today we're going to look at Luke 24, 13 through 35. The road to Emmaus. This takes place on the first Easter, that same day. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here, there these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. If you look at what we just read there, at verse 15, these two disciples that were walking along here, they were deeply troubled by Jesus dying on the cross because there was that huge section where they were explaining to this traveler that they didn't recognize what had been going on like what what do you mean you are you just just here because everybody knows about Jesus everybody knows that he was this powerful guy and and that he was crucified and and that and I mean are you just are you brand new around here I mean how do you not know who he is and they were deeply troubled by Jesus dying on the cross If you look at verse 15, as they walked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came and walked along with them. That word discussed there is actually better better translated argue. They were like deeply and passionately engaged in conversation, like really talking about it, like maybe almost yelling. Like some, some of us have this more quiet demeanor and, and that sort of thing, but, and then other people kind of talk a little louder and maybe more passionately. Well, 
apparently th- these people were, were arguing almost. They were, they were anxious. They were conflicted. They were upset. They weren't just, hey, what about, what about Jesus? What do you think about that? That was really too bad that he died on the cross. No. No, they were like, no but he, he died. He died. Can you believe that? He was supposed to be the one who was going to save us, and, and he died. He was, he was killed. 17. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. They were walking along, but when they at, were asked about this, it was like they, they, they stopped. This was, this was a deeply disturbing, deeply troubling thing for them. What are you talking about? This was, this, was really, this was really awful for them. Their Savior, their Lord, had been killed. And not just killed, crucified. Verse 21. But we had hoped that He was the one who is going to redeem Israel. We hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. After Jesus died, they thought he wasn't the one. I guess he's not. Being crucified means that you're a failure. That you are rejected. You're done. Everything that you are about is a lie. In fact, there were lots of self-proclaimed messiahs in Jesus' day, and many of them were crucified. And this was a way to definitively say, no, this guy is not for real, this guy is a joke, he's just all puffed up, and he's leading you astray, let's crucify him. This was not only a way to get rid of somebody, this is a way of shaming somebody into ultimate rejection. So Jesus dying on the cross meant to everybody that he was a failure. He was not who he claimed to be. And these disciples here, that's what they thought. Now, you and I, we also can get deeply troubled when God doesn't do what we expect. It happens. We get a rejection letter. We get an illness of some kind. There's a, a loss of a, a loved one. There's slow growth of faith in maybe ourselves or our, our kids or a friend. These things discourage us. So think of a time that you were disappointed with God. A time when He didn't do something that you thought He would do. Something that, well, God, why wouldn't you do something like that? I mean, we read about God's love and faithfulness, strength and healing, and and then in our lives sometimes, it's like, where, where is that? The reality is that God's program, God's agenda, if you will, has always included going through trials. There's always been difficult times. In the Bible, all of God's people, all throughout, all of these stories, these always include difficulties and trials. Noah had to endure, essentially, the end of the world. And then he had to start over. Abraham, he had a promise that he was going to have a son, but how long did he have to wait for that? Many, many years. Job saw all all his possessions and all his children just gone from him in an instant. All of it. Jonah saw the most wicked people who were alive at that time just pardoned. Like, eh, no big deal. When those people had slaughtered and killed tons of nations and cities. Jesus' disciples, these people who were walking along the road, they they knew that Jesus had to suffer and die and rise again. 
But it was like once it happened, then it was like they, they were discouraged as if they didn't know about it. Jesus even told his disciples about the cross and resurrection. But when the cross happened, they were discouraged. So Luke 9.22, Jesus said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. So Jesus said, hey, this is what's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to be rejected by everybody. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. And I'm going to be raised to life. This is what's going to happen. He even told them again in Luke 18. Jesus took the twelve aside. It's like, okay, guys, and you have something important to tell you here. He takes them aside and says, we are going to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man is going to be fulfilled, okay? He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. I'm telling you, this is what's going to happen. So that when it does happen, it won't be this big shock. But they were still discouraged by it. What's fascinating, isn't it? Even when we know bad things are going to happen, we still get thrown by them. We are also told about crosses, but when they happen, we get discouraged, don't we? Why is that? We, we, we know. These, these disciples knew. Jesus said, I'm going to get crucified. This is what's going to happen. But when it happened, it was like, how could this happen? This story here, this is meant to reinforce that Jesus actually rose from the dead. A lot of these, a lot of these resurrection accounts are meant to say, hey, no, Jesus really did rise from the dead. It wasn't just an empty tomb. No, we saw him. We saw him. Verse 25. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. That is a very stern rebuke, actually. When you read it in the Greek especially, it's kind of like, whoa. Jesus is being kind of mean. It's a pretty stern rebuke. There's even this, this, this word in there that doesn't get translated very well here. It's like, what? What is wrong with you? This, is, this story here, this road to Emmaus story, this is not made up. This is real. The disciples' foolishness actually adds credibility to this story. If you were going to make up a story about Jesus rising from the dead, you would not have made up this story. If it were made up, the disciples would not have been foolish. Their, their teacher, their Lord, would not have rebuked him that strongly. They also would not have failed to recognize him right away. Especially back then, honor was a big deal. You don't make yourself the fool in the story. Jesus, Jesus has this way of, of revealing our weaknesses. When we follow him and, and walk with him, he has this way of showing us that, boy, boy we're not all that we think we are. We, we're really slow to believe. We don't really trust him that much. We, we need a lot of help. When you, when you tell your story about Jesus, what he's done for you, it adds actually credibility to your story if you are the fool in the story. It's when we are weak that he is strong. So it's okay to look like the fool in your story. The disciples throughout the New Testament are, are shown as having little faith, really, well, throughout the, the Gospels. So think of a time when you kind of clicked, 
when you really had little faith. And then the Lord came through. That's a story to tell. Here's one more thing. Jesus didn't rise from, just rise from the dead. He rose to abide with us, to be near us. Jesus walks with these two disciples the whole way toward Emmaus where they are going. He walks with them the entire time. He didn't just rise from the dead and then appear and then, oh, see you later. No, he walks with them the whole way. Even though they didn't know it, he was there the whole time. Look at uh, the screen here with me, if you would. Isn't Christ with us until the end of the world as he promised us? Christ is truly human and truly God. In his human nature, Christ is not now on earth, but in his divinity, majesty, grace, and spirit. He is not absent from us for a moment. So, Jesus rose, and then we believe He ascended into heaven. And, as we say in the Apostles' Creed, He now sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. Okay? So, is He not with us anymore then? I mean, in the baptismal promise that we read, Surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. So, Jesus, the human Jesus, is at the right hand of God in heaven. All of the souls who have gone before us are also with him there. But God, Jesus is human, but he's also God. And in his divinity, he's not bound by space and time, so he's here. So some scriptures say Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, and then there's others that say Jesus is near, with us. Today in your Bible reading tracks, we're going to read one from John, where it says, I and my Father will come to him, anyone who believes in me, and make our home with him. And be in him even, it says. So Jesus' physical body is in heaven, but by the Holy Spirit, he is always with us. We've been sent this Holy Spirit, and so we have Jesus with us always. And just like here in this passage, Jesus walks with us throughout the day. And like these disciples, we don't usually notice. We don't usually notice. But imagine Jesus walking with you throughout your day. Think of the things that you do on a given day. And imagine Jesus being right there with you the whole time. Whether you notice or not. Imagine Him working alongside you when you're doing your, doing your work. Imagine Him driving with you in the car. Or standing with you in conversations after church. Imagine him sitting next to you when you surf the web. When you're posting comments about this or that. Imagine him sitting next to you right now. You don't notice, but imagine him sitting next to you right now. He's there. Just because we don't notice him doesn't mean he's not there. And occasionally, our eyes are open to the reality of Jesus in our lives. They walked, they walked together with him for who knows how long. We don't know how long. However long it takes to walk seven miles. And they only noticed him for just that brief moment at the end of the day. Once in a while, we'll get a glimpse of, whoa, Jesus was there. He's real. This isn't just make-believe stuff. This is real. Okay, I'll tell you a story. When 
I had some really weak faith, and when Jesus kind of showed up for me. A couple weeks ago, it was a Thursday. Um, it was the Thursday before Easter, and um, I was super discouraged and just distraught. And I got, got to the office, and I was supposed to finish the Easter sermon, and I had to have it done. And so I was going to sit down and work on it, and I couldn't think at all. I couldn't think straight. I couldn't even get a sentence out. This is like, that was like the worst writer's block that I've ever had. I've, I've been here for 10 years now. This is the worst it's ever been. And it was so discouraging. I, I, I went to, to, to write something and it was nothing. So I, I, I was praying and, and struggling and, and nothing was coming. And I was starting to think, okay, God's, God's not showing up. It's, it's all on me. I got to come up with something for Easter of all times, and I got nothing. Well, later that day, I, I prayed with Pastor Nate, who used to be at the Reformed Church next door. And, uh, and we talked and shared and stuff, and I said, I'm just having the worst day. I, I can't concentrate, and, and I, can't, I can't think, and I, I got nothing for the sermon on Sunday at Easter. And, and I, I actually said this, I don't think God's going to help. I think I'm on my own. And right away he said, well, let's pray about that. So we prayed, and, and he prayed about what I was going through. We, we each pray for each other. And as soon as he left, I finished that whole sermon. Somehow, I was able to sit down and I finished that sermon. I went from having, I can't even get a sentence out, to it's done. It was this huge turnaround. I don't know how that happened. I can't explain that. Jesus showed up. When you pray together with somebody like that, there's power there. And I, I, don't, I mean, it's not, it's not magic, but God showed up. Jesus is real. I can't explain to you how paralyzed I felt and then how free I felt after that. Once in a while, our eyes are open to the reality of Jesus. Verses 33 through 35. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. When you notice Jesus is real, tell your story to other believers. Tell that. Tell about it. They didn't just say, oh, that's cool, Jesus is risen. No, we gotta, gotta, I got to talk, got to tell everybody else about it. We need reminders, all of us, that this is not theoretical, that Jesus actually has risen from the dead, that he is real, that he does answer prayer, and that he does show up in our lives. Jesus is alive, and he walks with us. Let's remind each other of that. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you are alive, and Lord, you do dwell with us. We pray, O oh Lord, that we would notice you when you are there, when you show up, and that, Lord, we would be able to share those stories. Even if we look foolish, Lord, that even adds credibility to it because, Lord, we need to see your power, not our own. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.